Is there any other mammal that people find as despicable as the hyena? If a creature is furry and nurses its young, usually we're willing to admit some mammalian fellow feeling. Among furred creatures, only the rat vies with the hyena for most load. Hyenas, particularly the African spotted hyena, with its massive jaws, hulking shoulders, and startling laugh, have been terribly misunderstood. The creatures may not be beautiful, but they don't deserve contempt. They are intelligent and gregarious with a well-organized social system of clans patrolling discrete territories. The clans are ruled by females. Maybe the female hyenas gain a little extra authority or assertiveness from the surprising fact that male and female hyenas have nearly indistinguishable external genitals, about 8 inches worth. Their appearance has aroused amazement, confusion, and sometimes disgust. But the hyena's primary public relations problem is that laugh. To the unprejudiced ear, it sounds like a chortle or a giggle, but many human beings hear it as a maniacal cackle. The hyenas are laughing because they have an evil plan. In fact, the distinctive sound occurs when the animals don't have access to something they want. It's an expression of excitement mixed with frustration. Variations in the pitch also say something about the laugher's age and social status. Hyenas have one of the richest vocal repertoires of any terrestrial mammal, primates included. The laugh is one of many vocalizations, including a cheerful whoop that says, I'm over here, and an affecting array of mother and cub groans and murmurs. Another disparaging belief is that hyenas are skulking scavengers, subsisting on what's left over from the kills of the glamorous predators, lions and leopards. Hyenas, the most numerous predators in the savannas of sub-Saharan Africa, are in fact excellent hunters. Three quarters of their diet comes from large hoofed animals they kill and digest with astounding efficiency. Their massive molars pulverize bones. Hair, teeth, and hooves are regurgitated later. A few hyenas can reduce a 400-pound African Cape buffalo to a pair of horns and a patch of blood on the ground in less than an hour. In any case, scavenging is an honorable and essential profession. Lions hunt, but they're not above consuming prey that was slaughtered by somebody else. Almost every other carnivore, including human beings, does the same. The female hyena's faux penis may be amazing, but it is not efficient. In fact, it ranks with the human knee as one of evolution's truly bad designs. It's through this elongated clitoris that the female urinates, mates, with great difficulty for the male, and, ouch, gives birth. She even has a sham scrotum, fused labial tissue with no payload. Seriously misled, Aristotle concluded that all hyenas were male, which would be a drawback for the species. Ernest Hemingway believed that every hyena possessed both male and female organs. His mistake is the first word in a vivid description from the travelogue, Green Hills of Africa. Hermaphroditic, self-eating devourer of the dead, trailer of calving cows, hamstringer, potential biter off of your face at night while you slept, sad yowler, camp follower, stinking, foul with jaws that crack the bones the lion leaves. Hemingway liked to sit outside his tent and shoot them. A female hyena's internal reproductive organs are those of a normal quadruped. But her quasi-male external equipment makes birth painful and costly. The first cub, hyenas usually bear twins, is stillborn more than half of the time. The unlucky trailblazer moves along the straightened birth canal like a softball moving through a narrow party balloon. The death rate for newborns is a serious disadvantage, but there may be compensation. The females, all of whom are larger and more aggressive than any male, make sure that their young have priority at the kill. 
Among the lions, males eat first and swat the cubs away. At first scientists believed that the masculinization of the female hyena had one simple cause, a big dose of male hormones delivered in utero. One of these is androstenedione, which you can buy at health food stores, and is one of the substances that helped Mark McGuire's home run totals. Further research found that even when dosed with drugs that blocked the male hormones, the females emerged with external genitalia unaffected PDF. It turns out that the female hyena's hormone receptor has a mutation that causes it to misfire. It keeps sending the message of incoming male hormones even when they're absent. The same kind of mutation may be the culprit when human prostate cancer, male hormone driven, fails to respond to the usual drugs. The effect of hormones on fetal development is one thing Stephen Glickman, UC Berkeley professor emeritus of psychology, has been studying at the hyena colony he founded in the mid-1980s. The Maasai herdsmen who took Glickman to the burrow in Kenya to gather cubs were disappointed when he didn't want to take hundreds, only 20, back to Berkeley. His fellow authors on research papers include a developmental biologist with an interest in prostate cancer and a pediatric urologist looking for the causes of human genital anomalies. It's pretty unusual to have large, dangerous predators as lab research animals. Mice are easier. Visitors to the colony, including this visitor, are surprised when they see Glickman's 26 hyenas. They're big, each one larger than a street. Bernard, almost bear size, 130 to 200 pounds. They have an unwavering gaze, curious, confident, and undeniably appealing. They don't avert their eyes as dogs and wolves do. Surprisingly, they're not canids at all but belong to a cat-like family that includes the mongoose, the civet, and the meerkat. They do not smell bad, another common slander. What comes out of their unusually long digestive tracts is dry, white as bone, and scentless. They do mark territory with an anal gland secretion that smells like bad soap and is less offensive than the spray from an unneutered domestic cat. In the wild, a hyena hunting pack of 20 to 80 usually has one or two female chieftains. The females take the initiative and the males eat last. Because hyenas hunt alone as well as in packs, Clan members can be separated and when they reunite they go through a greeting ceremony much more elaborate and time-consuming than a domestic dog's. After some head sniffing, the two animals turn head to tail and raise the inside hind leg. Both expose their genitalia for inspection and establish who's the dominant one. As Weldold says, it's an appeasement, a reconciliation, an acknowledgement of rank, and sometimes an agreement to cooperate. The animals form alliances to wear down galloping prey, to help each other win fights with lions, and to defend their kills against other meat-eaters. The Berkeley hyena's cooperating skills were demonstrated by a test in which a reward would be dropped only when two animals pulled on two separate ropes at the same time. They are not inclined to cooperate with human beings, though, and don't make great pets. A group of men in Nigeria have enlisted muzzled and chained hyenas to give themselves an aura of magic and power. The shooting of hyenas in Africa is as common as the shooting of wolves in Alaska, and poisoning is also common, but hyenas are not officially endangered. Most people understand that without predators to limit the population, wildebeests, antelope, and the other ungulates would die from starvation and disease. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe, see you on my next video.